as if missing Brad Marchand and Charlie McAvoy to begin the season wasn't bad enough, the Bruins will now be without Taylor Hall, who's week to week after suffering an upper body injury in Saturday's preseason win over the Philadelphia Flyers. We're going to talk about the injury and who's up next in terms of playing time here on today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be, as well as take a look around the NHL. Today is Monday, October 3rd, and I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Boston Bruins your first listen every day, free and available wherever you get podcasts, so open up your pod app. Go to YouTube, hit that subscribe button so that you never miss a thing. YouTube subscribers will get some bonus content through the season as well in the form of immediate reaction to breaking news as well as post-game reactions as well. If you're on Twitter, Instagram, you can find the podcast at LockedNHLBruins and you can find me, my dad jokes, and hockey tweets at Ian C. McLaren. I hope you all had a great weekend. I hope you enjoyed getting outside, the fall weather, a Bruins preseason win over the Philadelphia Flyers. But there was some bad news from this game as Taylor Hall is listed as week-to-week with an upper body injury. He was hurt during the game against the Flyers on Saturday Jim Montgomery said it's a bit more significant than they had expected. Fabian Lysel was also banged up in that game. He took a hit from Rasmus Ristolainen that forced him to make an early exit. But word is he is feeling okay and should be ready to play in another preseason game. Uh, Probably not tonight against the Devils, but maybe Wednesday against the Rangers. So, how does this affect the lineup? Well, Pavel Zaka slid down to skate with David Krejci and David Pasternak to form a three-headed check line that could hopefully breed some chemistry and, you know, some camaraderie there among the the countrymen. And uh, that leaves a spot open on the top line. Jim Montgomery said he's considering Nick Foligno, Trent Frederick, and A.J. Greer on the top line there. Uh, He said those are the three guys you think of right away. And that's what the rest of camp is for, to try things out. Uh, He added Bergie is going to have a huge say in who the person is because he's going to lean on him, Montgomery is. As far as chemistry, Bergeron Zach is still an option. Hopefully they figure out in the next 10 days here. So Hall obviously will be out of the lineup to begin the season. Uh, me, personally, the first person I thought of right away was Jake DeBrusque. He's a left-hand shot, a natural left winger. Uh, if you want to keep him with Bergeron, fine. Bump him over to the left side, where he has played for the majority of his career. And you have options on the right side as well. You have Craig Smith, Oscar Steen, um, Mark McLaughlin, who's played very well and had two goals in the win over the Flyers. Fabian Lysel went healthy. Um, you could even, you probably wouldn't bump Pasternak up to the first line with Bergeron, but 
he's a guy that they have proven chemistry in the past. So it, it's uh, interesting to me that Montgomery defaulted to filling in the left side with a bottom six forward in a Felino. Frederick Greer, guys who are kind of on the bubble in terms of being on the roster to begin with. Instead of perhaps a more natural decision, which would be to, or natural move, putting DeBrusque back on the left side and putting a right winger up on the top line. Again, Smith, Steen, uh, McLaughlin, McLovin who's had a pretty good camp as well. No disrespect to A.J. Greer. He's looked fantastic so far in Bruins training camp, but there's a reason he was available to the Bruins. He hasn't quite been able to show that he can stick at the NHL level with his previous teams. Nick Foligno, to suggest that he's a top-line player still, is quite far-fetched. And uh, I'm not sure that's in Frederick's DNA either, to be a top-line guy. So we'll see how it shakes out. We'll see, uh, you know, what kind of lineup they ice tonight. The check line I love. I think Zaka's looked very good, but if you look at Devil's Twitter, you can see that they're kind of guffawing, uh, having seen Zaka in the past. And knowing that he wasn't quite able to pop in New Jersey. Hopefully playing with Pasternak Krejci will elevate his game. Uh, but for me, I have no desire to see Felino, Frederick, or Greer playing on the top line. Uh, I'd much rather have Bergeron. Yeah, sure, stick with DeBrusque. But put DeBrusque on the left side and bump a right winger up to that position. But that's just my opinion. In the next segment here, we're going to talk about uh, the injury to Lysel, as well as a look back at the win over the Flyers. But first, a quick word about Simply Safe. The numbers don't lie. In the last decade, over 4 million people have chosen Simply Safe home security to protect their homes. You don't earn the trust of that many people without doing something right. At Simply Safe, your safety is the only thing that matters. They protect you with cutting edge security technology powered by 24 7 professional monitoring agents who always have your back. With 24 7 professional monitoring, Simply Safe's agents call you the moment a threat is detected and dispatch police or first responders in an emergency even if you're not home or can't be reached. They blanket your home in protection with advanced sensors for every room, window, and door. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL. Save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first free First month free. Visit simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL to learn more. There's no safe like Simply Safe. I mentioned Fabian Lysel uh, was banged up on a reverse hit by Ristolaiden. He did not practice on Sunday, but he's considered day to day, uh, which is encouraging. After the look of that hit, uh, you know, could have been shoulder, could have been a concussion. He's not going to play tonight, but they're hoping he can play Wednesday against the Rangers. Uh, Chris Wagner stepped up, responded with a couple heavy hits. And it was a response that Montgomery felt was really important. There's a player understanding momentum, getting it back. You could tell the crowd got into it with Wagner's shift. And it's important to let other teams know you can't take a run at players. Chris Wagner making a case to be on the fourth line to open up the season. 
Whether or not his cap hit is prohibitive is another question. But again, with two guys on the left side now injured, you suddenly have more depth on the right side. Move DeBrusque over. You could have, say, uh, Smith, Pasternak, McLaughlin, Wagner, Steen on the right side. Even Jack Stanika could te technically play there as well, although he probably should be playing at center. Uh, Jake DeBrusque, as I mentioned, a candidate to move to the left side. He has been feeling uh, good lately. He has been looking more aggressive, more assertive, uh, and he um, said he felt better Saturday. Still has some ways to go to get up to speed for the beginning of the season, as a lot of guys do, shaking off the rust. Uh, but... He's enjoying life under new head coach Jim Montgomery, it's, it appears. Speaking of that game on Saturday, again, Mark McLaughlin made a mark with two goals for the Bruins. Uh, he um, was able to uh, get the puck in on a Jack Ashawn. Power play shot, that was a play that was set up beforehand, and then he uh, won a net front battle to bang in the puck later in the game. Uh, he said details are going to separate him and allow him to make this team. He's been really honing in on that. Uh, he thinks he can still make strides, and he's just trying to focus on uh, watching film. Gunning for a fourth line position, he said, and that's details making the right plays. John Beecher also stepped up with two goals of his own. Uh, it was his first game at TD Garden wearing the Bruins sweater. Uh, he said he was a bit nervous, um, but he is also intent on making the team. And uh, it's good to learn some of these lessons in the preseason. Now, there's been a lot of talk about putting some young guys on the roster or sticking with some vets. Obviously, waiver exemptions play a big role in that. Uh, guys like Beecher, Lysel, McLovin, Lauko, they're able to be sent to the AHL without having to go through waivers. Whereas your Oscar Steens, your Trent Fredericks, Jackson Nika, they all require waivers to be sent down. Of course, as do Chris Wagner, Thomas Nosek, Nick Foligno. So the question is, do you risk sending some guys down and losing them via the waiver wire? which is a real risk with a Stadnika for sure, Frederick, Steen to a lesser degree, or do you try to send guys down, veteran guys, try to find new homes for them uh, before trying to send them down and going from there? It's a big question. That needs to be answered by Jim Montgomery and the coaching staff management before next Wednesday's season opener. Now, at practice on Sunday, you had the check line together. You had Greer skating with Bergeron and DeBrusque, uh, Lindholm, Carlo, Riley, Strawman in the top four. You then had the Oceans line together. You had Felino, Nosek, Wagner, which is a real possibility as your fourth line at the moment. And then you have Beecher, Stanika, and Lettieri with Forbort skating with Clifton. Zboro skating with Kai Wisman, who's looked pretty good in camp as well. Of course, the Bruins right now, $2 million over the cap. They will have options with a bunch of guys going on IR to begin the season, including Marchand, McAvoy, now Taylor Hall. 
You can, of course, um, put them on IR, activate some other guys. But at some point, you're going to have to deal with those cap implications and uh, clear some of that space. We're going to talk about what's coming up this week here for the Boston Bruins in a moment and take a quick look around the NHL. But uh, I want to thank you again for making Locked On Boston Bruins part of your day. Every single day, the podcast is free and available on all podcast platforms as well as on YouTube. So please do smash that subscribe button so that you never miss a thing. All right, uh, so the Bruins, halfway through their preseason schedule, they have uh, won two of those games, lost another. They're one, one, and one, with one of the losses being in overtime. I should uh, anoint a big bear from saturday's game as well i'm not sure if i did that for the second game something i need to get back in the habit of doing i would uh, like to give a shout out to uh linus allmark in net he played the entire game wasn't tested very much but made all 21 uh saves on all the shots that he faced uh i'm probably gonna give the big bear of the game to mclovin he had those two goals four shots Um, and uh, looked pretty good in terms of trying to earn a roster spot for the Bruins. Chris Wagner gets a shout-out as well with his eight hits, two shots on goal of his own, and uh, it was McLaughlin who led the way with the four shots on goal. Tonight, the Bruins will play the New Jersey Devils uh, in New Jersey. Following that, they'll be in action Wednesday against the New York Rangers. That game will actually be on TNT as part of a preseason doubleheader uh, with Dallas, Colorado going after that. And then they'll wrap up their preseason schedule on Saturday with a home game against the Devils. And then, of course, things get going on Wednesday, October 12th, as they travel to the... uh, nation's capital to take on the uh, cap the capitals <laughs> to to begin the season don't forget the season technically begins a bit earlier with uh, two games being played over in the Czech Republic San Jose at Nashville on Friday to begin the season so some afternoon hockey coming up as well as some playoff baseball for those of us who still have teams in it Saturday another game in Uh, in Prague and then the regular season gets underway officially on uh, Tuesday I guess Tuesday October 11th the Rangers taking on the Lightning Vegas taking on the Los Angeles Kings so the big news for the Bruins Taylor Hall week to week I talked about him last week uh, with the locked on sends guys about how he is a you know break not a breakout candidate but maybe an X factor for the Bruins in terms of fantasy. You obviously want to bump him down your uh, list a little bit. However, you can put him on IR to begin the season and be confident that he'll put up some points when he does indeed return. I have my Keeper League draft tonight. In that league, I had traded Hall for McAvoy, both of them on the shelf. Uh, It's a salary cap league, um, and I've been doing a lot of research. Not sure if I'll add any Bruins, but Jakobs Borrell, I think, is a guy who could be impactful, especially in a cap league uh, for the Boston Bruins. Anyways, I hope you are all doing well. Had a great weekend. Tomorrow on the podcast, we will talk about the preseason game against the Devils. Uh, Maybe do an updated Atlantic Division power rankings to uh, tee up the season. 
and bring you all the latest on the black and gold. This weekend, I had a great chance to uh, get out for a couple walks. Uh, it was a busy weekend with the boys, basketball, hockey, birthday party, birthday party. Watched House of the Dragon last night, which was fantastic. Watched Rings of Power on Friday night, which was also fantastic. And uh, yeah, October is like my favorite time of the year with uh, hockey starting up. Those of us north of the border getting excited about playoff baseball and uh yeah just uh thanksgiving coming up here in canada this next weekend and uh going to apple picking this week picking up some cider so it's a good time of year i hope you're all doing well taking care of yourselves taking care of each other and we'll talk to you again here tomorrow on the locked on boston ruins podcast part of the locked on podcast network your favorite team every single day